So this is the HELP LDL apheresis treatment. Um, and we start with a blood withdrawal site. We have to access one vein to withdraw the blood from the patient to the machine, which is the Futura Vibron machine. And then we also have to have a return site. So the blood returns to the patient through the return site. And all of this is continuous. Um, there's no one point when there's too much volume depletion because it's called an extracorporeal treatment where the blood is continuously circulating to the patient, circulating out and circulating back. So uh, this is the Bibron Futura machine. Uh, it's an apheresis and particularly a selective AF LDL apheresis machine, but we know that the filter will precipitate many other factors particularly inflammatory factors, um, some cytotoxins, um, and there's among some other things that will be removed with the filter. So this is how it works. When we start, we circulate the patient's blood to the blood pump and the blood chamber, which is just a holding chamber releasing air. Um, there are several chambers that collect air, so you never have to worry about air embolisms but there's also a safety feature here at the end, which I'll explain in a minute. Blood comes and circulates into the plasma filter. And this is a plasma filter that separates the red blood cells from the plasma because it's the plasma that we treat. So red blood cells exit out here and are, hold, are held in this chamber here, the venous chamber. Um, but concurrently, all very... Um, uh, very rapidly, the plasma is exiting out here and going through a blood leak detector, then circulating up here. And maybe you can focus in on that. That's the plasma buffer pump. Right here, the patient's plasma joins another fluid, which is brought up from down here. This is an acetate buffer solution. And what it is, it's a special solution that we have to put a lot of heparin in, 300,000 units of heparin, because this pH of this solution is 4.85. And when we add this extra heparin to it, it changes the pH to 5.12. And at 5.12, those molecules, they become more positively charged, and they bind naturally to the negatively charged heparin, which causes a precipitate. And the precipitate is when that's, that's what we want. We want the binding of these elements that we're trying to remove from the plasma. So then this uh, precipitate starts to occur in here. As you can see, it starts to turn a yellow milky color. That's already precipitation occurring with the plasma. And then we want to remove that precipitate because that's all the gunk we're trying to get out, uh, inflammatory factors, lipids, fibrinogen, uh, lots of other elements are being removed. That precipitate circulates down here into the precipitate filter. This is all some extra sediment. This is a very um, interesting looking filter. A lot is happening here. A lot is being removed. But the precipitate goes into the filter and in the inside the cylinder of this filter uh, is where the precipitate remains. And then the clean plasma exits out the top. And as you can see, here's the clean plasma. But now we still have to remove all the extra heparin that was used for the precipitate. So then the clean plasma that's precipitate free needs to go into this filter. This is called a heparin adsorber. And the heparin adsorber helps to absorb all that extra heparin so it doesn't go back to the patient because that's only used for the precipitate for the purpose of precipitating. Then the clean-free plasma, precipitate-free, heparin-free goes into the dialyzer, and the dialyzer just finally rebalances the patient's plasma back to a normal pH level and removes any extra fluid. And then that clean plasma from the patient now circulates back up here into this venous chamber, remixes with the red blood cells, and finally returns back to the patient. But all of this is happening very rapidly. So it's, uh, but that, that's the process uh, explained in a slow motion. <laughs> yeah.